My name is uh, Tommy Staunton. I farm in Kinvara. Um, I breed um, beef shorthorns. Um, my prefix name would be the Karamba herd. Um, I suppose uh, I've, uh, I also do other activities outside of uh, farming. Um, I've been in business for myself. I suppose I inherited the home farm and that's what has brought me into farm, farming. Short horns when I uh, return home to take on the farm, um, and I suppose for me, short horns was always part of the farm. I always remember as a young fellow growing up, my dad would always have short horns that he would have bought from Clare, um, and the cows at the time would always rear two or three sub calves in addition to their own calves. You know, the home farm I had to bring the or the cows to home maybe two or three weeks before calving. And they are then, once they're calved, maybe three, three weeks, two, three weeks after they're calved, and they're back out into the winterage, which is ground like this here. It's good, good dry uh, limestone ground, as one might say. We're lucky to have it. Uh, it's uh, Westmore and Maryland bull calf, uh, maybe four or five weeks old. Like Caramba Lovable. Uh, Caramba, Caramba Lovable would have been would have sold to um, David Bradley Farmer for 8400 in my 2018 sale and um, Caramba Kissable, his daughter, would have sold to Catherine Williamson in Scotland for 5-2 in uh, 2017. Um, unfortunately I lost uh, Caramba Hottie a couple of years ago myself but um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, stock that I have and a lot of daughters that I have belong to Chalky. So let's uh, look at a couple more years out of them, kind of minding them as best as we can. So a few calves, hopefully in the next couple of years. We have semen out of them, um, but we only use it on farm. So this is a, this is a good long cow. She's actually the, the mother of the calf you've seen a little bit earlier on. Um, she's a gala uh, Blue Mountain. Yeah, she's, she's a nice, nice cow. Nice, good, good length, you know, good, good, good length or a good frame. Cows will be managed for calving, like, you know, they'll, they'll be on a hay diet pre, pre calving. There'll be no meal, maybe a bit of oats actually, maybe five, six weeks before calving. But as I said, they're, they're actually out here pre calving. They come home when they're due to calf and they go back out, um, back into this ground again, maybe two, three weeks after calving. Lot as well, which would be um, Canadian embryos that I would have brought in from uh, Scott Murraydale and Dan Stevenson in Canada Genetics. But um, I find my own cattle, my own breeding, to be, I suppose, slightly larger framed cattle than um, the Canadian. Uh, you've got three colours you've got the red, the white, and the roan. And um, you know, you really never know what you're going to get. You know, when the scan man comes along, I do ask him. Is it, a, is, it, is, it, is it a bull or a heifer in the colour, please? Uh, the <laughs> I think he, he thinks I'm going to give him an extra five or a tenner if he tells me it's a roan heifer every time, like, you know? But um, unfortunately, you'll never know with the, with the short horn what colour you're going to get, you know? What you have here then is uh, you have um, uh, Maryland's group, Westmore Maryland is in with this group of uh, cows and calves. There's maybe one or two heifers in it as well. So I'll just, just take you out there. 
this is um, Westmore, Maryland. I bought them from uh, Robin Penny Paisley in uh, Yorkshire. Um, they, they run a very nice herd over there called the Westmore Herd. And I seen this uh, bull as a yearling when I was over at the Yorkshire show. And um, after some of uh, Penny's fantastic uh, scones and uh, a, a, a large uh, announcement from um, Rob on the price of the bull, I decided to purchase him, <laughs> and, and I don't regret it. This is his. Uh, yeah, we, we we have a second uh, crop of calves on the ground. Actually, his first crop of calves, I should say, on the ground, and uh, very pleased with uh, how he's working. Um, bring you over. He's very quiet, very good natured as well, which is very important in a bull. Um, you need to be able to walk around the animals. As you can see, I suppose yeah, I mentioned earlier that the docility of the short horn breed is um, is is is, uh, is noted um, within 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 the short horns. And um, I think uh, that's very important if you're farming. You don't want to be walking into a field where the animals are running the other way. Um, so uh, anything that shows any signs of bad temperament, they're, they're not they're not kept around the place. Um, so say I'll just walk over to to um, Merlin here. Westmore Merlin, uh, great nature, and uh, then he's also breeding very nice calves. This is one of his here um, from last year, and uh, I have uh, high hopes. So we'll place him um, I, I believe there's no point in being a beef farmer unless you can actually have uh, quality meat. And uh, what's good about the, the beef short horns is that there's a natural marbling in it. They're one of the, the traditional breeds. They're noted for their quality of. Um, of beef and uh, we, we in this country I don't believe that we put enough of emphasis on the quality of meat it's often about driving you know getting the animal to the right size so it can be processed and that's not always the right way to do it the, the right way to do it is to let the animal mature use good quality meat because at the end of the day it's the consumer that's going to make the choice whether they're going to eat uh, beef or not and we need all the advantages that we can with, our, with ourselves and that means that we have to produce the quality product at the end of the day. I should say that um, you know I wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be possible for me to farm um, if it wasn't uh, for Trevor Chadwick um, who manages the farm on a day to day basis. Have you enjoyed your moves all with Trevor? I have. The stone walls and the grass is green. What age did you start halter breaking your cattle at? Until they're weaned. You'd like to be doing that bit earlier, but it's not all practical. Do you vaccinate? Yes. What do you use? DVD, Lepto and uh, Clostridium. For everything. The ground as well here, uh, Connor. It's uh, you know we are lucky in a sense that 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 the ground does dry out very very quickly, even if we have a little bit of wet weather. Uh, you just get a dry day. The ground seems to be workable again, you know. I suppose that's the advantage of uh, being in the limestone, limestone area. This is uh, Karamba Lulu. So she just um, she's uh, had her second calf. She, uh, she's a daughter of Karamba Hotty. Yeah, always have uh, uh, plenty of milk as well uh, with your um, beef short horn. Uh, this is a uh, this is a traditional cow that I bought from um, the Owen O'Neill um, and she calved last night. That's her um, Maryland calf beside her. Her name was um, Baliar Isabel and this is a calf, just a little calf here. It was a Lulu's calf, a little pepper calf. Again, this is a, a Maryland daughter who was born two or three days ago and uh, obviously found <laughs> a lovely sheltery spot. Good guy. Good guy. They're um, they're normally short horns are normally fairly vigorous when they're born. They're up and sucking um, very very quickly. Um, yeah, they're, they're they're a nice breed. Um, uh, I, I think I was saying uh, I was saying earlier one of the other benefits of a short horn when you cross them either with a Charlie or a limousine 
or even an Angus, you're always going to get a great colour. You know, with the Angus, you're likely to get a blue. With the Charlie, you get a great, uh, you get a great cross, and you also get a great cross with the limousine. I think um, that's obviously an advantage as well when you're when you're selling these animals. Um, these are some replacement heifers that we have here. Um, Trevor, Trevor, Trevor just do 24-7 on the farm. He's been with his third year coming up on Trevor Yeah, he's got he's got a healthier looking every year, I think, you know. So I think that's why he's hanging around so long, you know. The last sale that I had um, was my online sale on pedigree sales in 2018. And uh, since then I have uh, I suppose I've retained some replacement heifers um, in 2019. Um, we actually had a TB outbreak which uh, affected the herd slightly but thankfully we've had nothing since um, you know and um, we've built back up some of our numbers with replacement cattle I think there's a, there is a future in um, suckler farming and in beef farming but I do think that that requires the farmer to to be um, you know more more self-sufficient not so much reliant on um, the supermarkets or the factories to produce their meat I think the farmer has got to take that into his own con, you know, take more control of it, um, maybe um, produce meat for the consumer directly. Um, I, I, for me, any of the challenges that I've met in farming, and I'm not in, I'm not, I'm not totally reliant on farming. I operate um, a business outside of farming, or a number of businesses outside of farming. Um, but one of the things that I identify in farming is that the challenges that I've faced. Um, I set up the my pedigree sales online because I felt that there was a wider market. Um, I, I needed a wider market for for my for my cattle that I was producing. I, be, I believe that I was producing good quality, but I believe that the the mark restricted the the, um, the 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 buyers or the purchases the purchases. So I took that into my own hands basically and set up uh, pedigree sales, and I've done that successfully in 16, 17, and 18, and hopefully will again. 